A very good morning to you, and today we have some very sad news. The radio, the hacker, the hunter, has decided to let out its magic smoke. Let's go into some details and explain. I actually read the book, I read the manual, I decided to do the non-man thing and I actually read the service book and it said how to set up the radio. I thought, right, okay, no problem. We shall just do what it tells us. Unfortunately, the book has some errors in it. The book refers to the RP38, not the RP38A. We had a, a little bit of magic smoke letting and what this means is basically, I'm pretty sure that the two output transistors are shot to pieces. I'm also pretty sure that one of the driver transistors is shorted, let alone the other one over here. I'm thinking that not only have we changed the capacitors, but I'm going to test the tolerance of all these resistors. I'm pretty sure the smoking may well have damaged something and... I'm not going to take the chance with the, the replacement transistors because they're, they're not cheap and Bulgaria was the cheapest place I could find them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking apart this board. Now this has obviously been replaced at some stage before because this is a different style of resistor to all of these. All of these may well be suspect. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by testing them all and seeing where we get to. All of these little square block resistors are completely out of tolerance. And that's not a good thing, because that's apart from me being able to throw them about and make lovely clattering sounds on the bench, that's not good because the wrong current flows through and it does the wrong thing. So I thought, oh dearie me, this is going to be very expensive. Well, actually, I said rude words, but I'm not going to repeat them here. And what I ended up doing was rebuilding this board from the ground up and... I took everything off, and I mean I took everything off, and I tested everything. That's why we have this pile of no good resistors, because I checked every single one. The two output transistors were deader than a very dead thing. They sharp as a dead short on my little tester. Even one of the pots, one of the adjustment pots is out of tolerance, it doesn't go wide enough. Every other transistor tested good. So I put them back in. That was great. It was, you know, no problem. Just boom, 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 boom. Everything soldered in. So this has had a, a rebuild. All these, these old uh, tropical fish caps are very good. This old film cap here is within spec, no problem. Even the 1500 picofarad one, no problem. Yeah, so all I need to do is clean some flux up. And there's a fluxing joke in there somewhere. So how do we clean the board up? Well, there are two ways of doing it. You can either do it this way, which is cover the thing in isopropyl alcohol and set light to it like that, which will work. It, it's, it's not a bad method. And you keep your hands nice and warm while it's uh, toasting away there. Or you can get busy with it, let's move the isopropyl, and just literally look at the board and say, OK, there's no flux left. Well, there is, there's bits there and there. Let's get the cleaning brush and we'll do some scrubbing and cleaning. And we'll just, again, we'll sprinkle isopropyl on it, give it a scrub, and that will clean up all the excess flux. So there's the board, let's move the old junk out the way, it's clean, it's tidy and I'm also going to just make sure that the top of the bench is clean of any lead and wire, like that. 
So here's the board in position, ready, ready to rock and roll. Uh, I'll put it that way around. It doesn't really make any difference. Now the instruction manual calls for you to short out the input to ground. So let's find something suitable to short that to ground. And it's easier to do it on the back of the board. We might as well use the old transistor actually, thinking about it. It might as well serve some function in its past life. So this is the input pin here. And we need to short that to ground, which is the middle pin. I could have just used a giant blob of solder, but uh, let's be a little bit careful. And let's turn it over. You also have to cut this test link. Now this test link has got a, a solder blob in the middle, so I'm assuming I can just heat it and flick it. Yep, there we go. So that's open the test link. Now to do any more, we need to now power it up with the radio. This is where the fun starts, isn't it? We're gonna see if it works. So one radio, that plugs into there and it only goes in one way round. Put the positive on the positive side, make sure the radio's off, negative's on the negative side. We also need to get a speaker and plug that in because you can't test anything with the speaker out. And I'm also going to need to measure milliamps. And we put one of these on each side of the test link. So we make sure that we've got a link there. And the first test we have to do is to switch on the radio and get three milliamps on this meter by adjusting this pot here. So let's turn it on. And we've got 2.8, so let me find my flat metal screwdriver. Now, for this, you can use a metal screwdriver. You don't need to insulate it because these pots are insulated. So let's just turn this up. Oh, too far. Three point one, a little bit too high. Three point oh three, three point oh four. So that's good enough for that. Now we've got to measure while this is doing all its thing. We've got to measure eight point five volts from the center of these two big resistors to ground. Now the easiest way I think is to do just by whacking that probe in there as the earth, and that's the negative of this capacitor. Let's poke this at the junction here, and that is showing, well, that's pretty much 8.5 already. Let me just uh, give it a little swing and make sure that it's accurate. Now I'm, I'm actually looking at the meter directly, which means my head is at a strange angle. Yep, yeah, no, that is 8.5 directly. So that has now dropped a touch. Let's take that away in case that's loading the meter in any way, shape or form. Not that one. Three point oh three. There we are. Good enough, I would say. Turn the radio on. And it works. Now bear in mind, I haven't got an aerial at all on this radio. And that's the base and treble controls working. So, now I could sit here and do an alignment, but to be quite honest, I think 
I've just about had it up to somewhere up here with this at the moment. So I'm going to, I'm not going to give up on it. No, we're not going to give up. We're just going to take a break. And the only thing I'm going to do, apart from check the alignment on this, is the cabinet. And that will be the next video, I believe. I'll just do the cabinet, make sure that's all glued together again so that it looks pretty, and bring it back so that you get a wonderful, wonderful view of this board. Fitted, working, with the speaker in the case, and I'll have to describe some of the repairs, obviously, that I'm going to be doing to the cabinet because it isn't quite how it should be. If you do like the video, click the like, the thumbs up, you know what to do. I, I, you know, every YouTuber says, hey, click the thumbs up. Hey, click the likes. Do all that. Subscribe button. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't forget. Watch me next time. Oh, um, don't forget to watch this video and that video and this video and that video and those videos. I'm going to calm down. Um... If you want to check out another one of the series, that will appear down... You know what I'm saying. It's going to be on screen. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you later. Bye for now.